Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, we will discuss the characteristics of living jawless fish, the Petromyzonidae and the Myxonodidae, and compare them with what we currently know of the fossil record. The first living jawless fish is the hagfish, family Myxonodidae, of which there are five living genera. These jawless fish are best known for their slime producing abilities. Hundreds of glands are found under the skin which produce large quantities of slime if the hagfish encounters a predator. This slime causes the predator to have difficulty biting onto the hagfish and it also gets entangled in the gills of the predator fish. Now hagfish also have the ability to tie themselves into knots and use this technique to bite without jaws. They are scavengers and will latch onto a piece of dead fish or other aquatic animals and pull by twisting into a knot and using the muscles along their bodies to pull off the rotting flesh. Hagfish have been observed to feed on dead whale carcasses on the ocean floor. Hagfish lack extraocular muscles and a lens in the eye, as well as a reduced number of cranial nerves. Such traits place hagfish near conodonts as an early offshoot of a jawless fish. Now the fossil record of hagfish extend back into the Pennsylvanian period, but since they lack scales and other hard parts, they likely are much older. The grotesque mouth of a hagfish featured paired lateral rows of teeth, which are part of the tongue, and the head contains several sets of tentacles. Now, despite lacking jaws, the mouth can grab onto food and hold it with some force. Now, the next group of living jawless fish are the Petromyzoniformes, or the lampreys. Lampreys are parasitic fish that latch onto other fish and feed on them. The mouth of lampreys is a circle of hell, sharp rows of teeth, which can grip onto the sides of a slippery fish and not let go. Early fossils go all the way back to the Mississippian period, and they show long history of being parasitic fish. Lampreys are often discussed in comparative anatomy classes since they are common and can be dissected by cutting them in half. The notochord is formed out of prismatic cartilage and is very rigid. The brain is primitive with just several lobes. The eyes are better developed than in hagfish with a distinct lens in adults, larvae lack lenses, and the eye and lens is controlled by extraocular muscles. Lampreys, like some fossil agnathid fish, have a hypophysical pouch, which is a unique opening at the top of the head used for chemosensory conduit for water to pass near the olfactory bulbs in the brain. Lampreys have an interesting life cycle. Adults will migrate up into freshwater river systems to breed, and they, they die like salmon and the newly hatched larvae will travel down the rivers feeding on detrital material until they're large enough to attach onto bigger fish. Some will live their adult lives at sea while some will remain in freshwater lakes. Lampreys can tolerate a large range of salinity. Now hagfish and lampreys are often classified together in a group called cyclostomata for they ha both have circular mouths that are lined with retractable sharp teeth. As such, both living groups are considered an early offshoot of the earliest fish, while most of the fossil groups are extinct and are considered more closely related to modern jawed fish. All right, you should now be able to discuss the characteristics of living jawless fish. The Petromyzonta, the lampreys, and the Myxonodidae, the hagfish, and compare them with what we currently know about the fossil record of other 
jawless fish. All right, thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the descriptions below.